Hello. Hey man, what's up? How's it going? Good man. Pretty oh. stoked. Coaching. Alright, so you're the bard in this game, right? Yeah. Alright, um, so I'm gonna share screen with you so you don't have the 15 second delay. Okay. So just watch on Skype. Oh, okay, cool. I'm just gonna, I'll, I'll turn off the screen. Then. Yeah. Sure. All right. So, what divisions is this? Uh, I think I, I think it's uh, plot five. Plot five. Gotcha. One. All right. So, hell, hell incarnate. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've been dropping really bad in place. Earlier this week, I was diamond five. But... Ooh. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what what is your goal for the end of the season? What is your a uh, goal goal for the immediate future? Like, the immediate future is, like, just to become, like, a better player. All right. Uh, just to climb, I guess. Um, like, what? what's your division goal for the season? Uh, I know this sounds, like, crazy, but Diamond 1. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah com- as high as I can go. Gotcha. I mean, it, it's good to be ambitious, so. Like, season 3, I was Diamond 1. I kind of took a break and, like, I, about two months ago, I really started coming back into it, mm-hmm. and it's, like, a lot. Like, I've lost a lot of, like, my mechanics and whatnot, and my understanding of the game. Well, something about understanding the game is, uh, it, it's fluid. It It's based on, you know, meta. It's based on, uh... You know, several factors, you know, things in, things in lane change a lot as the season changes, so taking a two-month break can can be a huge detriment. Um, but, you know, like, general mechanics are just about, like, like, just, like, getting them back after taking a break, so let's see what happens here. So, did we miss the first creep? Like, you have the experience buff uh, bonus from your chimes, but I worry yeah. about Sivir. Yeah. We did not miss the first re- creep. Okay. Like, is it is it right to... To be so aggressive, I guess. Um, early, like, as long as you're confident in hitting your, your stun there, it's, like, fine. But, you know, you, you saw the window to hit the hit the stun there a couple seconds ago. So that was good. Um, but you, you need your movements to be less predictable. That way you aren't hit by hooks like this. Okay, you understand that you have level 2 here. So you, even though you know you're probably going to walk into that hook, you understand you're going to hit 2, so you still play up. That's good. Like, and generally what I like to do is get the lane chubbing in a favorable position with the carry uh, before I start harassing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, going for that stun there was actually, it was was really nice. Yeah, I mean, I feel like often I, I, I see openings, but it puts, like, a lot of strain on my ADC. Like, mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not sure if it, it's correct because it, it makes them... It's really hard for them to like auto and last hit. Yes. And, I, and a lot of times they don't want to 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 go in on that. And I'm not sure if like I guess that's the correct play. So um early so like level one right? You have four potions to the carries one. So like getting a couple of hits off on the carry is like ideal. Um you know if you're like able to hit snare both of them with bar if stun both of them with bar it's even better. And your carry doesn't really need the follow up on that. So if they're like if they're like, if they have this mentality of that they need the follow up instead of farming, because your your entire goal is to give them the advantage. So it's yeah. like it 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 just comes with it comes with understanding the game. Um, if they choose the follow up, then maybe you need to adjust your playstyle like a little bit like immediately because you realize oh they're gonna follow up or maybe even talk to them and be like you know I'm just harassing, don't worry about it. Just make yeah. sure we get the lane in a favorable position. So it, it really depends on the situation.
Alright, so let's take a look at this. It seems like a definite mistake on my part. Yeah. So you get hooked here, you need the Ezreal Q, play. You don't need the flash here, you're not in tower range. And then you just like you leave your carry very vulnerable here. Yeah. Very nice stun though. So in this situation, when the lane is pushing like this, you don't need to be playing up like this because the creeps are going to aggro you if you make any if you like harass back at all. It's gonna be a lot of damage. And your carry just is just like looking to get this farm. Yeah. So like it doesn't it, yeah. it, it it's like it's pretty bad in this situation because the will the wave make it? I'm not I don't even it'll barely make it it seems. I think you're gonna miss like one or two creeps. Yeah, you're gonna miss a couple creeps here. Wow. That's unfortunate. So like playing this far up when you know the wave is pushing back to you and you know uh, the advantage is going to be like amplified by the by the fact that you're going to miss the miss these creeps is like really bad. So this is like this is this is a huge detriment now. You lost all the you lost uh, like three waves of experience between the both of you. Like, you're gonna recover because of your challenge, but your carry is just in a pretty bad situation. And it it, it it stems from it stems from the flash first of all. Like was your Q up there? I don't think it was. I don't think it was. Oh, so like playing I, I had two minions. Yeah. Oh yeah, you queued minions. So being up that far, especially after you missed your missed your uh, slow and stun, is just yeah. It, it's problematic to say the least. Yeah. So like I guess I I, I would need to understand at, in that situation just understand that. Like, how important the wave is. Yeah, you have to understand that it's pushing back to you, that you're going to be in a favorable, favorable position if you just let the wave, like, push and build up and give the carry the farm. And playing up like that, you know, you burn summoners for that as well. So you really don't have anything to work with, especially with the first blood, with the four-man gang. Did this guy rage quit? Oh, he, oh yeah, I forgot this game. Uh, he kept DC. Oh, okay, well. Unlucky, as they say. I think he died because he DC'd there. Yeah. Alright, let's take a look at your vision here. So, did you. You walked all the way around for a chime, right? Yeah, that's what happened. So. So your vision just doesn't exist, and you know, putting the ward out here doesn't actually do anything. Rek'Sai's most most viable gank option is through try. So mm -hmm. walking around like doing this doesn't actually does nothing for you. So you need the ward here immediately. Yeah, see, she just comes all the way around. Bam. Yeah. Like, I feel if Kha'Zix is here, it's a... Uh, oh, absolutely. Completely agree. No, oh, and, then, and then we end up fighting, but we don't have Kha'Zix. Yeah, we do have Kha'Zix. Right, but, you know, burning our each flash and ult there. You know, uh, like, all her summoners there is, like, really good. So like maybe when Thresh was around here, you could just back off and move move back. You know, I don't. I understand that you're incoming, but you need to understand that you're playing at a, uh, at a severe disadvantage right now, and just and just uh, farm out the wave and try and reset it here. Because they're they're pretty low here anyway, so they can't really like fight you. So if you just like back up here, I mean, maybe throw a ward down here to see if Ari's Ari, Ari's incoming. That's mm -hmm. probably your best option. So like I understand, I told you that like. That this is going to be awarded here at this point, but Rexha probably isn't going to wait, waste any more time. If anything, she's going to take Scuttle Crab and come back down because Grubs weren't up until now. So either the Rexha's viable options are to go back into try, look for another gank, in which case you're probably going to be playing around here, so you're going to be able to avoid it, mm -hmm. or she's just going to go take Scuttle Crab over here. 
most likely she's gonna take the scuttle crab here because you know it's, it's a waste of time you're probably gonna be playing at tower for a bit then she can come back around and because of the way you played earlier she um she's not gonna think this area is warded anyway so you're going to be able to see the gank if, if, if it's incoming or at the very least if you ward here you're going to see her jump over, and then you can play more defensively for um, knowing that she might be in try. Yeah. It, it, um, just a question, like, is that like pink ward that I put? Is that like a good placement? It's okay. It's not the greatest. Um, you know, it's one of the most common places uh, in solo queue where people put the pink ward. Uh, people have been adapting to putting it in the brush over here nowadays. Oh. Um, you know, that th this is more than fine, but you know. Uh, this get, if this gets swept out, you still have vision of the mid laner. So Ezreal chose to stay, stay here, and it's it, it's it's causing problems for them. So Rutsa is probably going to be here soon. So you need the ward out. Okay, you re, you recognize this, and there you go. Okay, so you see the pink in here. You can't contest this. Yeah, so I probably shouldn't be. Yeah, you sh you can't contest this. Period. There's no way, because he red side shows up immediately. Once you see that ward there, you have to be like, okay, we have to play, we have to play far back. Like, there's no way you're contesting that, because as I, as, as I, like, I, I called it immediately that like red side is missing on the map. You can't contest this pink ward, and you, you get punished for it. Yeah, and typically like uh, they end up warding that when like the jungle is going to come soon, anyways. Yeah. So, yeah. That's definitely a mistake. Yeah, especially after you heard that Rat's Eye ult, you need to be like, aware. Because the only lane that is like feasibly gankable is yours. Where's Nasus? Is Nasus DC2? Uh, he's like getting destroyed by Fiora. Really is, wow. Anyways. Or never mind. Well, it's not that bad. It gets worse. <laughs> Another thing on... on... Oh, that's... That is... Several levels of unfortunate. So what happened here? Let's take a look. Yeah, I was going in to try to like win that team there. That yeah, and then Ari just happened to be in the brush over there. So uh, you need the ward here before you make that play. Because you, you lock vision here, you're never going to get vision here because of your uh, disadvantage. Yeah. So, so if you ward here before you jump over, just to be sure that Rexite isn't lurking around, because once again, you are the only la available lane to gank. Like, Fiora will probably trade one for one. Or maybe not. Nah, you're just dead. Alright. So I guess the top is, like, available to gank, but... Midler is missing. Jungler is missing. Probably somewhere in this general area. Um, my, yeah. my best guess... Honestly, it would have been here, but Arya is already here from Try. Right? We can look at her pathing on. Uh, we can look at her pathing, in fact. Okay. She. Oh, wow. She walks all the way around here. Bypasses your ward. This is a very heads up. It's very impressive. Bypasses your ward completely. And just sits here. Wow. So, warding here fixes everything immediately. As I said, I would have assumed that Ari would, would be here if, if I was in your position. But unfortunately, she made she made a very smart play and walked all the way around your your one ward here. So, warding here would have fixed things, uh, would have would have stopped any idea of doing that. Unfortunately, because of, because of that, you die here. Like I under like. Yeah, you just need you just needed to recognize that someone, two people on the map are missing. Yeah. 